uh, what what's the din of the Ger Toshav? So uh, we'll uh, we'll look at some relevant sources, and uh, we'll then we'll then uh, have what to say about that uh, concerning Ger Toshav today. What's a Ger Toshav? Let's uh, discuss that. Ger Toshav is a fellow who is not Jewish, a Gentile, who takes it upon himself to keep the commandments as described by the sages. That is, Gentiles are also obligated to keep the Torah just to a different extent than that of Jewish people. They still have to believe in God. They cannot worship idols. They are they are supposed to uh, have law and order. They're not supposed to steal, etc. We, we went through those before. A Ger Toshav isn't just a Gentile who, for whatever reason, decides, you know what, I'm going to keep the commandments. He wants to live among the Jewish people. It's good. All Gentiles, wherever they live, should live according to these rules. They're allowed to maintain their, their cultures, their languages, whatever it is they want, but they have to know what's forbidden. The, the seven commandments are basically six thou shalt nots and uh, one thou shalt, which is keeping law and order, judges and, and policemen and all that. And they don't have to have a particular form of government, and if they so choose, they can come live in the land of Israel. But, of course, then, in order to do so, they would have to take it upon themselves basically declare in front of the court, uh, an ad hoc court, that they intend to keep the Torah as they are supposed to. They don't have to keep it as Jews. It means they don't convert to Judaism. They just uh, they just have to uh, keep what they are supposed to keep. So let's see where the particular cases where the Rambam discusses their halacha. Are we allowed to have them around the land of Israel? And we're going to see the major disagreement that uh, the Ravad has with the Rambam. Uh, he describes here uh, whether you're allowed, whether you're, what we're not supposed to do. We're talking about idolaters here. We shouldn't be praising them. Others might come to admire them. Should be This is a rabbinic form of giving. Uh, you can't just give them presents. But if it's a ger toshav, the kind that has accepted the commandments, so we can give it to him. This means we support the Poor Gentiles, just like we support poor Jews, means we provide for them. Why? Because that's the right thing to do. That's the way of peace. That's not a technicality. It means that's a, that's an ikar. That's a major principle of the Torah that we do kindness for everybody. The Jewish man is supposed to leave certain parts of his wheat crop, for example, untouched. He's supposed to leave it for the poor. That's a lekat shechlan peah. He is supposed to leave it also for the Gentile poor. Uh, we don't stop them from taking it. Because that's the way of peace. We greet them. Even on their holidays, when we're not supposed to cause them to worship their foreign gods. That's also the right way to do things. They don't double say. Don't say shalom, shalom. That's uh, saying reserved for Jews. Don't go into his house on his holiday, let's say he had a Christmas or a New Year's Day, shouldn't do that. Litain lo shalom, in order to greet him, you see him outside, you do it. Don't go, don't go to him on the holiday and do it because it's usually connected to idolatry. She bumps into him, let's say he's really into keeping Christmas. So you have to, you know, like it's Tisha B'Av, you say, okay, shalom, you don't have to be Merry Christmas, everybody. No, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, he continues over here. And everything we're saying here, uh, it only applies when the Jews are uh, exiled among the nations. Oh, when it could even be, it could be even the land of Israel, but they dominate us. When the Jews have the upper hand, we're not supposed to leave a Gentile who worship idols, worships idols among us. Okay, it's very important the Rambam says this because there's Goyim and then there's Ovid of the Avu Dazra, the actual idolaters. That they're not sometimes there's an overlap, but sometimes there's not. You could have Gentiles who are not idolaters. This is the Rambam's opinion. He says he should not have temporary residence in the land of Israel. That is, you have people who are actual idolaters, so you're not supposed to, let's say, rent a hotel room to them. They can't take up a, even a hotel for a night in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv even. They're not supposed to be passing through the land for business purposes. 
Lo yavor baritzenu. He shouldn't be there. Ad she kabel of sheva misvot shenistavu b'nei noach until he accepts the seven commandments that the were commanded that were placed upon the b'nei noach. It means all of humanity, as it says. Lo yeshivu baritzacha. The pasuk says they should not dwell in your land. Afilu lefi sha'a even for uh, a moment. That means it's, it can't even be temporary. Rama says afilu sha'a. They can't. They can't even come and visit. We shouldn't have all these, let's say, cross wearing. Uh, tourists come into the country. Let's say he did accept the seven commandments. Now he could be a resident alien. Ger Toshav means not convert to Judaism, but a sojourner who is allowed to settle in our land. But then the Rambam adds, By the way, this is the laws of Avodazar according to the Rambam. This, this, we cannot accept. This is an important rule. We don't accept Ger Toshav among ourselves. Ela Bizman Yovel Noheik when we're keeping the proper laws of the Yovel. The Rambam in the laws of Shemitah and Yovel says that it was a biblical commandment to keep the sabbatical year once every seven years. And the Jubilee was the 50th year. And once some of the tribes, just some of the tribes were taken into exile by the Assyrians, these commandments fell out of use. Once the, everybody is properly settling the land, the, the people who belong in the land are there, then these commandments are in force at least according to the Bible. But the sages instituted that, well, we can't just let these commandments fall aside. So they said, now these commandments are enforced, but on a on a rabbinic level, which is uh, important because even though apparently there's a few sources, and this is the way the Rambam holds, they were still counting uh, seven sabbatical, seven years to get to the sabbatical and the 50th year as a yovel, according to uh, rabbinic law, that was not uh, for later times of the first temple and the entire second temple period, it was not the actual Yovel. And that's what the Rambam is describing here. And in Shemit and Yovel, we saw the Rambam actually connects this this uh, rule. is Are the sabbaticals kept by biblical force or by rabbinic force as a nafkamina for many other halachic issues? So here's what he says here. We only accept them if we're actually keeping the Yovel. If we're not actually keeping the Yovel biblically, we can only accept righteous converts. Ger Tzedek means people actually convert to Judaism. They give up the Gentiles, they become like full, full-blown Jews. The Ravid disagrees here. This is the, uh, the Ravid has a few sagas. Whatever Ramba mentions the concept, you can find the, the Ravid, the Ravad has what to say about that. Here, he says something important. That's the, what the Rambam said up here. He comments over here. Okay, I never heard this. We never saw this. What's the Rambam saying? This verse over here, was talking about the Canaanites. You're supposed to get rid of the Canaanites. But we can allow, let's say, Egyptians and Greeks and Babylonians to pass through for business purposes. What's the Rambam talking about? And he says uh, here, and also the Rambam brought this verse that says they should not sit, means settle in your land. But who says they can't pass through? We could let this uh, Ishmaelite uh, caravan, well, we don't want the Ishmaelites going through our land, but you could let the Ishmaelite caravan come by uh, as spice traders. That's okay, according to the Ravat. And uh, you look at the Kesef Mishnah there, he actually even repaired the caravan. He says, uh, The Rambam says, yeah, that verse was talking about the Canaanites, but why did it say the Canaanites cannot dwell in your land? Lest they uh, lead you astray. Yachatiu means put you in the wrong direction. They're bad influences. So even though the verse was discussing leaving Canaanites lying around or sitting around in the land of Israel, it applies equally, the spirit of the law applies equally to uh, any idolatrous Gentiles. So, too, uh, it's, it's not literally sitting, according to the Rambam. It means being around, whether they're uh, actually intending to settle here, or they're just tourists on vacation, or they're, they are merchants uh, passing through. We could still be influenced to do the wrong thing. I think it's actually quite dangerous. It was heartwarming to see that there, there are good Gentiles out there who want to see the good for the Jewish people. Uh, when there was this labor shortage, it's going on right now. There's a massive labor shortage in the agricultural sector here in the land of Israel. They're saying how these uh, cowboys from Texas, what makes them cowboys? They're Texans, but they wear cowboy hats and they you know, have a little bit of the trappings of what people imagine are cowboys. Oh, so it's real life cowboys coming to help out. 
I think it's very nice of what they're doing, but I also think it's dangerous. You have uh, handsome young men from a foreign country come to help out in the land of Israel. Uh, it's dangerous because some of our young women might become attracted to them and vice versa, and that could lead to major problems. We do not want that. So thank you very much. It's good. Uh, if, let's say, you are in the United States, you want to help out Israel, you could help out monetarily, or you can help yourselves. Texas is, by the way, also under attack right now. The, the federal government has basically opened up Texas to invasion by all sorts of unseemly and uh, unwanted foreigners. So you know that there's uh, the types who are going to eventually try to take over the country, if not kill the people, are coming in through there. So they have their own problems to deal with. They should be defending their own God-given country and land. But they shouldn't be coming here to fraternize with our people. That's that, that's saying we, we, we think that it would be better if they would just find uh, some other place to be helpful. Uh, we, we greatly appreciate them. Okay, getting back to this. Uh, so that, that's uh, that's the Machlokas over there. And uh, the rivet over here says, uh, when Rabbim says, Lo shalom bizman vil eme kablin el geret tzedek no bilvad, Maimonides says, we only accept these resident aliens uh, when the when there's a yovel. But if there's no yovel, we can only accept true converts. He says, eni mashwel lo bishivad aretz. Okay? I, I don't know about that. I, I don't agree with this halacha he says about the dwelling in the land. This is very short. The, the Ravad will be more clear over here. Okay? We're going to see this. I, he says he disagrees with this whole idea about us allowing uh, non-Jews who have accepted the commandments to live in the land of Israel. Let's see what he's talking about. In Isuri Bia, the laws of forbidden relations, uh, the Rambam has to describe who is who because different groups marry into uh, themselves. So the Jews are supposed to stick to the Jews. And even among the Jews, you have the people who are considered uh, shouldn't come into the, let's say, Mamzerim. They're fully Jewish, but they marry among themselves or uh, the Ammonite and Moabite converts. They keep their own marriage class, like a caste almost. And among the Gentiles, marriage is fair game. The Gentile among Gentile. So there's basically Jews and those who are not supposed to come into the Kahal among the Jews. And by the way, there's also Kahuna. The, the priesthood has certain higher standards. Those who want to be able to have their daughters marrying to the priesthood also have to keep to certain standards. So it's important to know who is whom. The Rambam says, what's a ger toshav? He's accepted upon himself not to worship foreign gods. Along with all the other commandments, all of six of them, that were given to the children of Noah. But he is not converted. He is not circumcised himself like a Jewish convert, nor has he uh, immersed himself in the mikvah. That's the general stage, at least for a male convert. First he circumcised himself, then he goes into the mikvah. So we can accept him. He's considered of the pious uh, Gentiles. Okay? Uh, that's, that's how they can achieve the, the, the status of chasidut. But why is he called a resident? It is permissible for us to settle him among us. That's what they have up here. Ram continues. We can only accept these resident aliens when the Yovel is in force. Nowadays, at least until the Messiah comes, uh, we don't have a Yovel. And by the way, we should be having, according to Rambam, at least a rabbinic jubilee here. But we don't do that. I don't know why. Uh, so he says, you can't. He wants to keep the entire Torah except for one particular uh, part of it. By the way, many people, unfortunately, behave this way. Even they're supposed to keep the entire Torah. There are certain parts of the Torah I, 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 that I can't do. By the way, he says, I want to be just like a Jew, except for one thing. I, I don't I don't like that whole mitzvah of sitis. I don't believe in that. Technically speaking, a Gentile can keep all the commandments he wants, but we do not accept him as a ger toshav, even if he's better than a ger toshav, not just the seven mitzvahs. He keeps six, six twelve. Taryav mitzvot, we still would not allow him to settle in the land of Israel. So this is where the, uh, the ravad, the ravid, actually explains to us what he meant over here. 
So let's go into it. Omer Avram Dadzeh Mechaber Satum Bechatum Velo Pirish Mahu Ein Mekablin Ger Toshav. Okay, this what what the author he's pointing around the Mechaber over here is is closed up and sealed. It means I don't understand what he's saying. What do you mean we don't accept uh, Gentile converts except during the times when we practice the Jubilee year? Mahu Ein Mitzvat Ger Toshav. And he didn't explain what what is the mitzvah of Ger Toshav. Here's how it goes. Here's how the Rav understands this. Who she'ain moshivin oto betocha ir Yerushalayim. We saw halacha before. Noach's based on the over here. Uh, the halacha is you're not supposed to have a ger toshav settle in Jerusalem. He could settle in he could settle in Hebron or Tel Aviv, but he can't be in Jerusalem. The Rashim be It says in the Midrash halacha sefrei imachay yeshev v'lo beiratzma. He should sit among you and actually in a good place. You have to help him find a nice place to live, but not in the city, okay, which would be Jerusalem. It is a commandment to provide for him. What, how do we provide for the? How do we provide for this ger toshav? Should let him live with you. He even calls him almost like a brother. And like other idolaters, technically speaking, he could buy an eved ivri. That's a little bit of something that really you shouldn't allow such a thing like to happen, and they should redeem him. But technically speaking, he could he could do that. And certain laws don't apply to him unless the yovel is in force. Some end up being a leniency for him, and some actually end up being uh, a stringency for him. If the yovel is not in force, so this rule about keeping him out of Jerusalem doesn't apply, so he could actually settle in Jerusalem. Notice the, the Ravad is therefore assuming that there is such a thing as a ger toshav when the Yovel is not in force, the entire Second Temple time. It just means that certain laws are not in force. Uh, the land doesn't have the exact status of holiness as it did uh, the second time around. Uh, we saw that that was a big machlokas, Rambam and Ravad, how the sanctity of the land works and also the sanctity of the Temple which is uh, beyond the scope of what we're discussing now. You're welcome to look this up or reference earlier Shurim. He could technically buy uh, a Hebrew servant until whatever, uh, for as long as, and in servitude for as long as he wants. Why? Because there's no Yovel. When the servants, that's the maximum time when they would be set free. There's no Yovel. There's no set time for this. So when there's no Yovel, suddenly... This Ger Toshav actually enjoys a certain leniency. He could sell in Jerusalem, and he could uh, he could buy the slave and keep him enslaved for as long as he wants. Well, Einanu Mitzvim Lachayoto. However, because it's not Yovel time, the Yovel is not in force. We also don't have to provide for him. Zel Hachmir Love, and that's a, that's a stringency. He's on his own. The Karova Devarlio Min Hatam Kibizmani Yovel Hayushom Tim Vaya Yachol Lit Parnis Shalob Torah Sivur. Uh, he thinks perhaps the reason for this connection is that when the Yovel was in force, they used to, uh, let's say, let the lands lie fallow. That's what it means, Shomatim. So he found a way to provide for himself without mu- much hassle or hassle on, on the community. But now we can't. If there's no Yovel, uh, so we can't so much. From this, you see that if you have someone who says, I'm coming in to join the Jewish uh, community, but I'm not going to circumcise himself, and I'm not going to make for that means I'm not actually converting to Judaism, so he could stay as long as he wants. So, uh, I like to point out that the way the Ravad reads the Gemara entirely differently, the source of Gemara, it's because the Gemara says, Ein ger toshav no heg. The, the law of ger toshav doesn't apply. So the problem read this is, yeah, we're not supposed to have ger toshav around. In the And Ravad says, no, particular laws relating to the ger toshav are not in force if there is no Yovel. So it's a very radically different approach to how to understand this. In answer to the to the general question, what is the policy nowadays? The policy is actually a machlokas, Rambam and Ravad. The for better or for worse, I don't know if this is Bidafka. We have to a very important distinction has to be made. Whenever we see something in Jewish practice, we have to wonder, are we doing this because we know this positively is the right thing that should be done, or that's just the way it is, and it could very well be bidiyavad, or even not right altogether. So certainly according to the Rambam, you know, the fact is that the state of Israel does not enforce the halacha, 
And even though there's a law of return, uh, we the, the state is does allow all sorts of foreigners to sell land. Heck, we even have this idea that foreigners who want to practice the forbidden, sorry, the foreigners who want to murder, their, their stated intention is to murder, but not just murder. Murder Jews in the land of Israel are given uh, a place to live in the land of Israel, and they even provide for them. We give them money. Uh, we give them arms. Uh, there's a there's a, currently a place uh, which was uh, previously populated by millions of hostile Gentiles who by no means accept the Torah and want to kill Jews. And it has been recently uh, depopulated of its hostile inhabitants, but the state has actually declared its intention to repopulate those areas, to resettle them with hostile, in intentional murderers. So obviously this halacha isn't kept. So does the halacha follow the, the Ravad in this case? I don't know. Um, but it does open up, for example, uh, a door for the, the Heter Mechira, for example. The Heter Mechira relies in part on this idea that you have to sell the land of Israel and you have to sell it to a so-called good Gentile. So it has to be a Ger Toshav. And the only way you could have a Ger Toshav around that you could not only allow to be around, but you could actually sell land to him and let him build a house and settle. Uh, that, that would only be according to the Ravad. So I would imagine that many have accepted the Ravad, although many of us ideally say perhaps the halacha should, we're more nationalist and uh, we're practical and uh, we're thinking in uh, terms of what would be tactically better for us. We should not be allowing uh, any uh, Gentiles, no matter how good their intentions to settle among us right now, because perhaps Maimonides' interpretation of the sources and the halacha is correct. So the jury's still out on that one. Um, and uh, I'd appreciate more questions. There are those who have made arguments both ways. I think that because we're dealing with, let's say, an Isr do Raisa, and we have here a major machlokas, we should tend to rule stringently out of doubt, which is the general rule. You have an Isr do Raisa, and you have a doubt, so you should uh, rule stringently, and uh, that will bring us to the conclusion of that particular topic. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.